Hi, I'm Shamisa Mapandera. Miriam was unable to be here tonight, but she filed the following report and asked if I would stand in for her. Young girls growing up in this country lack an equal representation of role models in government compared to men. But Arlington County stands out with women like Theo Stamos, Carla de la Pava, Ingrid Morrow, and Barbara Favola, just a few of the women's names voters will see on the ballots on November 3rd. All are incumbents, three are running unopposed, and one is defending her seat in the General Assembly. Theo Stamos was elected three years ago as Commonwealth Attorney. That's the same as district attorney in other states, as a district attorney in other states. I asked Ms. Stamos for her perspective on what it's like to be a woman in a historically male-dominated field. She answered, to be a prosecutor requires no certain gender characteristic. It's more about being able to execute the position effectively. An example of what she's talking about is the first domestic violence response team in her office. She saw a need and filled it. She went on to say, I stand on the shoulders of a woman who set a high bar for being fair, competent, and an extremely effective prosecutor. Ms. Stamos and her husband raised two boys in Arlington, where she's been a prosecutor for 25 years. Arlington County Treasurer Carla de, de la Pava knows a lot about balancing work and family as well. As the first female Hispanic treasurer in Arlington's history, she is directly accountable to the voters of Arlington. She's also the mother of three grown boys. Ms. de la Pava shared her admiration for women who pursue executive positions while not undervaluing their work at home. She said, I chose to stay at home during my children's formative years, but I never abandoned my desire to use my professional skills to help my community and support my family. As female millennials enter the working world, that still lacks gender parity. Many see figures like De La Pava as a role model. She said, it's humbling to find yourself representing so many because of gender but the role and responsibilities of treasurer do not change because I'm a woman. Remember, I was mentored by Frank O'Leary and I don't want to minimize the confidence handed to me with his endorsement. But if women are to succeed as elected officials, they will need the support of both men and women. Some women were born to lead, like Arlington Commissioner of Revenue Ingrid Maroy. As commissioner, she emphasized fairness and customer service as top priorities. The staff of women and men she has assembled enjoy high approval in the county. In fact, this will be her third election running, running unopposed. Ms. Maroy's private life is not that of the quiet civil servant. Quite the contrary, she has been a fierce advocate for social justice since her arrival in Arlington from her native home of Suriname at the age of 25. Ms. Moray describes her philosophy on women and leadership this way. I have always felt it was important to support women. If there were more equity in politics and government positions, you would see items like ERA and equal pay for women as the law of the land. Many of the social programs that support our nation's most vulnerable are issues that women tend to be more personally and professionally informed about. As a trusted figure, Ms. Maroy's endorsement is a prized one. When asked what she looks for in a candidate, she answered simply, honesty and being a good decision maker is what earns my support. Arlington has intelligent voters who know the difference between a capital investment and waste. Arlington's done a good job of putting women in leadership positions in government, but we're still lacking the diversity necessary to represent the wider range of backgrounds in our community. Many men support what were once considered women's issues. Adam Evans, Virginia State Senator, had this to say, it's, fundamental, it's a fundamental truth 
that women and men should be treated equally under the law. And this core principle should be explicitly included in the US Constitution. Our government functions best when lawmakers are truly representative of the diverse populations we serve. Still, women represent under 20% of all elected positions. Yet women have proven their ability time and time again to be consensus builders, even in the most polarized circumstances. So why is it that women are reluctant to engage? State Senator Barbara Favola, who's up for re-election, suggests one reason may be that women are uncomfortable with the demands of fundraising. She said that many women who decide to spend time away from their family or devote themselves to something must be stirred by passion. Few women enter politics because they are chasing success. Women are far more attracted to politics for an issue that needs attention. Former Secretary of State and presidential candidate Hillary Clinton meets the highest standards as wife, mother, and stateswoman, yet she's constantly under attack. I asked Ms. Favola if there's a double standard, and she responded, women are expected to be soft and nice and above all, uh, above all other things. That's not the case we know for men. If women fail that standard, they become unrelatable and people start looking at them as if they're defective. I believe we have to honor and respect the choices our sisters make, whether it's to be a soldier or a politician or a full-time parent, no matter what. I'd like to leave you with a quote from Gloria Steinem, whose new book, My Life on the Road, hits shelves this weekend. She writes, power can be taken, but not given. The process of the taking is empowerment in itself. That's Miriam's report. I'm Shamisa Mopandera sitting in for Miriam Janari. Now back to the news desk.